as we roll through September, let's talk about some of the things that happened in August. HDCIA conference happened in August, and it was one fantastic conference. This was our third year of speaking, and the first year which we hosted a table. We thought it was very great success as far as networking and training, and we're definitely committed to going to the 2015 conference. The next thing I want to talk about is the loss of Reportive. Now, TechCrunch published an article, yes, Reportive is all jammed up right now, and it's not really jammed up anymore. What happened is LinkedIn bought Reportive, and so now Reportive, which was a fantastic tool for searching all sorts of social media by an email address, now only searches LinkedIn. It's a huge loss, but it's also a huge opportunity for some other company to step into that spot. Now, there are alternatives, and the ones that are listed by TechCrunch they list Reporto, Arc's browser plugin, Vibe, and Connect 6. And of these, we like Connect 6 the best. However, Connect 6 can also be severely annoying, and it isn't quite what Reportive was. What I would love to see is to see Spokio step into that space. And sure, they could do it for subscribers only, but if they had an add in that allowed you to search your email in the same way that you can use Spokio itself, it could be a beautiful thing. The Definitive Guide to Snapchat Hacks, an article from the Daily Dot. You may have seen um, some of the news reports that they say that for the age group of 18 to 34 year olds, Snapchat is actually more active than Twitter. Hard to tell when you look at it. When you first open up Snapchat, you're, you might look at it, say, what the heck you know, that's good for? You send a few Snapchats to your friends. You don't understand you know, why this could possibly be so popular. But as you go through the article, you can kind of learn some of the little tricks that you can do with Snapchat. Some of these are other apps that you actually use on Snapchat. For instance, SnapKeep right here, so you can keep all your Snapchats. You've got a couple of other apps and a couple of tools to help you draw better pictures through Snapchat, um, access to better color palettes, ways to change the information inside the contacts list, etc. So there are other apps built on Snapchat. The ecosystem is growing, and that's one of the things that calls to um, that age group, along with the idea that it's private, although those of us who have been looking at this thing for very long know that there's no privacy or security in Snapchat. Next, let's talk about Google location history. So the URL that I'm on right now, maps.google.com slash location history slash b slash one slash, if someone puts this into their browser, Google will identify the location history based on your email logins or your other logins for your Google apps. And that means where you go with your phone for the most part if you have Google on your phone, especially those who have Android phones. So I took a look at just one month worth of my travel. And here's, here's one month in um, July to early August. And it's really kind of an interesting thing. The, the thing about this is it can be useful to you, but it can also be very scary. If you wanted to delete all history, you do have a chance to delete history from this time period or delete all your history in that section. Now, keep in mind, Google's not the only one who tracks you like this. Apple does too. They, you can get to that in your um, iPhone settings. I believe you go to privacy, location, you scroll to the bottom. It's something like search settings or service settings. And then you scroll to the bottom of that list and choose another button toward the bottom of that. And you can see the map that Apple has for you. And you can delete that in the same way. But even these two aren't the only ones that track you. So Facebook knows everywhere you've been. Verizon or AT&T or Sprint or T-Mobile, whichever service you're using, knows everywhere you've been. There's a lot of other services tracking everywhere you've gone. Google and Apple just happen to show us this information and let us kind of have access and play with it ourselves. So this is another thing that I have a love-hate relationship with is these location histories. And then the last thing that I want to talk about for August, Twitter analytics now available to anyone. So if you have a Twitter account, you probably already know because they've been flashing little um, headline at the top of everybody's Twitter account saying, come check your analytics. But if you don't, now's the time to check it out. You can go in and just choose a special um, URL and take a look at your analytics. Sadly, it won't let you switch the username and check somebody else's analytics. That would be nice, but nonetheless, you can um, check out exactly what your account, um, how many times it's viewed, how, what kind of reach you have, that sort of thing. And it's kind of interesting. All right, thanks for watching, and we'll see what happens in September.